Hi, I'm Alexi. I'm a classically trained animator. I'm also an amateur fashion history and folklore enthusiast. Today I'm going to be talking about Beauty and the Beast from 1991 and discussing one of the most hated dresses in the Disney Princess lineup. So the glamour video also covers the blue dress, which I would like to do later. In this video I will be doing gouache instead of digital because I just got a new gouache set and I'm really excited to use it. So I also just wanted to talk a little bit about what it was like to use gouache. This is kind of a new medium for me. I've been playing around with it. A lot of people recommended it to me in college and I was like, no, I love watercolors and I still do. Um, I think I was pretty adverse to it because everyone was like, oh, gouache is like better watercolors. When I don't think that's the case at all. I actually think it's more manageable acrylics. Um, I bought a set that was true primaries, which means my set is um, magenta, a cyan blue, and yellow, as well as white and black. So I had an interesting time mixing some of these colors. I think I went a little too heavy on the pink for trying to create some of my deep reds. But I'm learning more and having a really fun time with it. Um, I do want to be able to like it takes a lot to water it down to make it feel like watercolors, so I want to try my next piece having a watercolor base and then building up some more intense colors in gouache, uh, but I'm really happy with how this went. I had to go over the liner a few times in the face, and the face transformed a lot. So now that we've talked about painting, back to what you came here for, talking about history and dresses. So in the Glamour video, the historian they bring on is April Callahan, and the results of the Glamour video is not really practical for animation once again. Just like my Snow White video, I in no way mean to be insulting Glamour or their purpose in these videos. They are trying to make educational content and not inherently saying that these costumes are wrong or ugly. However, I have noticed many people will say those costumes are inherently wrong or ugly because of accuracy. Even though I'm not a huge fan of the bell yellow dress, uh, I don't necessarily think it's wrong. And I do think the effects that they did with the dress and the way the dress moves while dancing is beautiful and achieved its intended effect. Hopefully the dress I make would also be beautiful while in fluid motion. Um, in the Glamour video, they don't actually talk about the original folktale, which is a bummer. There are beauty and beast themes from all throughout mythology. One of the most notable ones in the West is Cupid and Psyche, which is a favorite Greek myth of mine. But we do actually have an original author for this folktale, and she's a woman. Gabrielle Suzanne de Villeneuve wrote the novel La Belle et la Bête in 1740, which is the most formative version of Beauty and the Beast that different plays, movies, and retellings have focused on from then on. So I will be taking design cues from essentially the 1730s to the 1780s, cutting it off at the era of Marie Antoinette's life. So. Even though the rest of the film is very dedicated to this Georgian Rococo aesthetic, the ballroom dress for some reason is giving us 1840s. Like young Victoria, which is not a very popular fashion historian era and I am also not a huge fan of it. In the Glamour video, I think it's really funny that they lower the saturation of her dress to pastel. Because the liquid gold effect that the animators made to pop in the scene wasn't historically accurate. like. In the story, it's literally a magic dress. <laughs> they made it with magic. A lot of illustrators take the opportunity for Belle to do a beautiful robe, robe a la Française with a lot of detail that wouldn't fly in animation. So I do at least appreciate that most illustrators go for these mustardy tones instead. It's a showstopper dress, so we want it to pop and the saturation to be higher, especially given the context of the scene. I am not going for a robe a la Française. I'm actually a bigger fan of the robe polonaise. So this style started when peasant women tucked their long skirts into their pockets and noble women noticed that they made this puff and the noble woman thought the puff looked really cool. And I think the drapery in this follows the intentions of that same puff and that 
exists in the Disney final design. And if you look at different iterations of her ballroom dress in concept art, I think there's a lot of points where they're drawing from Rococo or Baroque fashion. I really have no idea who likes the Victorian dress so much because I think all of these drawings are like really cool and they could work for the scene. There's also a lot of 18th century opera costumes that don't necessarily follow the rules of the Robe à la Française and end up with the tears the way her final dress does, so I think we can reference that without being entirely historically inaccurate. I'm also giving this dress a little more detail than my Snow White dress because it is the showstopper dress and it's not needed for as many scenes. Basically, I'm trying to match Disney's energy because between all the shiny gold highlights and the tears, are a whole layer of work even if the design does come off as very simple because it's perceivably monochrome. The big deviant decision I'm going for is painting the bodice and overskirt black. I think it's really cool the way we've seen different line art come into effect and uh, the different subtleties of black in the 2D animated Disney films and I think they could really play with this. Um, the yellow dress has been redone like hundreds of times at this point, so we might as well like get fun with it. I did take a bit of inspiration from the Belle's Enchanted Christmas dress being a two-tone dress, and I'm really into this print of an opera costume, and I liked that in the concept art of her day dress she has a black skirt, so I want to bring that element in and make Belle the princess for the goths, because she's already, you know, a monster bleeper. <laughs> And I still think the black would pop against the gold and blue of the ballroom and they could really play with like the nuance of having like blue and gold highlights in it. So uh, I did end up finally getting the colors that I really wanted on the dress digitally. So you'll see that at the end. I was having a really hard time mixing the blacks to get that blue and gold. So you'll see the end result. It kind of has like a weird magical oil slick feeling that I like critiques for myself in terms of how feasible this is to animate, I would probably have to take off the two rosettes at the skirt or at least draw them much simpler. There would be a final draft for that. Considering the amount of flow in the, the amount of flow in the sleeves and the bottom of the skirt which would show off a lot cooler in animation now that I've sat on it. I don't think it's entirely impossible to keep at least one. So finally, let's talk about the hair. Have you guys seen the show The Great? I think they do something very smart with Catherine to paint her as a more modest feminist character. They don't have her complain about corsets or stays being deadly, which is a myth started by men. They just tend to keep her out of wigs and with a lower hair volume than the rest of the nobility in this show. So that isn't to say that like being hyper feminine or following the trends means that a character or a person isn't feminist. It's just that if you're going to do like an I'm not like other girls look, especially historically, I think in the 18th century at least, having a simpler hairstyle makes more sense than having a character reject corsets entirely, which would be like, I'm not like other girls, I don't wear underwear. I'm of the opinion that all Disney princess hairstyles should be achievable by a kid with the help of a parent. So as long as they have about the same hair texture and length. So personally, I would never put her in historically accurate hair for this scene. And by that, I mean I would never go closer to the end of the Georgian period the way a lot of people like to. I'm gonna go closer to the beginning, even though it's not gray or, you know, powdered. And I think uh, without society judging her, Belle would probably enjoy a smaller hairstyle anyways. Her hair, I did want to keep that middle part that she has in the film, even though it's not really historically accurate. I also made the length of that hair a bit longer and cool curlier to make it feel a little fancier. Um, I did remember I did those two long curls in my snow white one as well. I promise I'm not going to keep just doing that. It just really felt right for this design as well. <laughs> So in my Snow White video, I covered a lot of my opinions about whether or not historical accuracy is necessary or good, especially in fantasy stories. Uh, so if you want the full in detail, you can go back and watch that one. At least with Beauty and the Beast, there is like a very deliberate period that we mostly associate it with, which would be either a Baroque feeling from Jean Cocteau's film or or a Rococo feeling from when the novel was written. 
yeah so i hope you enjoyed watching the gouache process and me mixing all those colors tell me if you prefer watching traditional or digital videos i'm probably going to keep doing both but i recognize that this process doesn't necessarily have the look of a cell animation like the snow white one did there would probably be less shading and nuance in the color but, you know, Beauty and the Beast was made in an era where Disney was still doing a lot of traditional painting for animation, concept art, so, you know, that's fine. It kind of matches the vibe. If I were doing Rapunzel, I would probably concede to doing it digitally. When thinking about doing Rapunzel, Disney definitely made that one a lot less historically rooted, uh, but there's some fun looks in the TV show that we could play with. Tell me what you guys think, what you guys want to see for me next, especially in regards to Disney Princess content. Also just wanted to offer a correction, um, I refer to some dresses as uh, opera costumes, uh, but there are a few that might also be court dresses that were just from the highest level ladies and therefore could also be that elaborate. I'm not sure with every print that I have, sometimes the resources are like in Russian, uh, so it's hard to tell, but most of the elaborate dresses I've referenced are either court dresses or opera dresses. So yeah, here's my take on the ballroom dress. I do want to get to the blue dress. We might get to that next month. Thank you for your support. Please, if you are seeing this on YouTube, please consider supporting me on Patreon as well. Checking out my TikToks, which are frequently about animation history and art making. I also have educational content on Skillshare. You can follow me on pretty much any platform, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, as Alexi Does Art. Thank you.